September the 7th, 2023. I'm going to be your host, Dana Durnford. Hope you're doing well on this Thursday as we destroy Earth with endless perpetual radioactive fallout. I hang my head in just absolute sadness. I would say call in, but we can't even live stream on Rumble or YouTube since the day of the cover story, which was the fake releases. So they claim that uh, nothing got out of the buildings. And for 12 years, nothing got out of the building that doesn't exist. That's the official story six weeks ago. And now they're dumping into the ocean despite the fact that we have actual studies of the fallout covering the entire planet for over 12 years, nothing matters, only the lie. So the buildings, um, there's four reactors and eight fuel pools melted down. So one in, that's reactor three and four. So I'm showing you them because it's so, I'm assuming it's blatantly obvious the buildings are completely destroyed. They blew up and, and uh, there's nothing left of the building. So they put these bizarre covers over in order to manipulate you into thinking the fuel pool was intact. They rolled out a host of apologists and this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to do a new cycle and this video Um, since today interrupted our ability to live stream on the 24th, the same day, the announcement that they're now going to release when it's never stopped. It's never stopped. Uh, it's been very difficult to get back to our normal scheduled time because you have to shoot the video, you have to convert the video, then when you upload the video as a premiere, it takes quite a while before it's high quality. And two shows ago, it showed up as very low quality because I didn't wait the extra hour. We'll get there, I hope. So I'm just going to go through a news cycle. We got, we got one story coming up. It's incredibly important. About, and it's about the Taiwanese fuel pools, which are the exact same as Fukushima. And they let a lot slip. The fight over Fukushima dirty water, dirty water. This is lethal by the leader just walking past it. And so he, Tim Hornyak, is hooked up with a lot of apologists, real, real apologists, been around the entire 12 years. Uh, he's, he wrote a book about robots. He lives in Japan, Tokyo. And there's nothing he won't do to destroy your future, from what we're seeing. He claimed the numbers were, this is interesting, the numbers were climbing on a radiation dosimeter as the minibus carried me deeper into the Fukushima complex, he's talking. Biohazard suits no longer required in most parts of the nuclear meltdown. <sighs> And be given helmets, I wear because he flushed everything into the ocean at the surface, where he put 10 feet of uh, steel, cement, and pavement on top of it in increments. They've had to abandon the site so many times. Now, I showed you pictures of the buildings. You're not walking out of a nuclear meltdown. The building doesn't exist anymore. It's supposed to be 190 feet tall. The reactors were at the very top of it. You're not mo walking out of a building where it's lethal doses. And I disrespect him for publishing those pictures. The road to the plant passes abandoned houses, convenience stores, abandoned gas stations. He said the earthquake struck off the coast and flooded the plant. Uh, there was a tectonic plates let go. And the earthquake took out around 1,200 miles, not kilometers, but miles of the coastline, 10 kilometers inland. It came ashore at over 400 miles per hour with multiple waves that rode on top of the 
preceding ones. So it found its way up to 10 kilometers inland at very high speeds that you couldn't outrun or outdrive. That led to a deadly triple meltdown, triple reactor meltdown. Wouldn't that be a great place to, to put a picture of the reactors? In any of these stories, yet not a single one, has the fortitude to show you something like that. Um, so I show you two f for the price of one. These are the buildings where they're claiming nothing got out, only 2.2 grams of tritium, and everybody's making that claim for the last six weeks or so. It's a coordinated claim from the Asian, from Taiwan, South Korea, China, and Japan, working in tandem with Indonesia, Malaysia, to hoodwink the entire population into uh, perpetual complacency. Looking down from a high platform, you can see a crumbled roof where a hydrogen explosion ripped through the Unit 1 reactor the day after the tsunami hit. R ripped through the roof, there was over a million sievers. Three sievers is a lethal dose for millions of years. Everybody walks past it, dies for millions of years. It never goes away, in other words. So what's a million sieverts? The nuclear fuel left over from the meltdown had a tendency to overheat. So it must be continuously cooled. Well, there's nothing left in reactor three and four because the fuel pools and the reactor cores are actually gone. But reactor two, the fuel pool and the reactor core went the, the accepted terminology is China syndrome. It's not gone to China and nothing, but it's where you go way down into the earth. Uh, it came in contact with water, and there's a hydrovolcanic explosion that opened the ground violently. In six places, it was measured at over 10 sieverts an hour, the emissions, and it looked like steam. You had to abandon the site when the steam started because of lethal doses. It's um, so a 9.9 magnitude earthquake struck off the Japs. Pacific coast flooded the plant, knocked out its emergency generators, initiated the failure of the cooling system. Actually, the earthquake lifted the ground six feet and shifted it. I believe it was north six feet, and that disconnected the water intakes, so it was going to melt down tsunami, and it did before the tsunami even showed up. And then again, that led to a deadly triple reactor, triple reactor meltdown. Why not show a building? Because not a single media has done it in six, uh, six weeks. Because the, 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 they're making a the claim nothing got out until now. And it's not getting out, it's in the tanks, but don't worry about it, they're mixing it, it's filtered. I mean, this is ludicrous. This is the most, the most insane, the most bizarre, the most twist, most important story we'll ever have in history. It's by far the most important story for many thousands of years to come. This will still be the most important story, unless we have a solar flare that takes out the power grid worldwide, which would all the nuclear plants and fuel pools will melt down on the same day. I guess that's what they're hoping for. Looking down from a high platform. So there's no high, unless he's way above it. We've seen those pictures of where some of the alleged dignitaries were at the site, and they're quite a long ways away. The nuclear fuel left over, so they're up by the administration building at higher ground, looking down towards the site. Nuclear fuel left over from the meltdown is the tendency to overheat. There is nothing left down. Must be continuously cooled. Well, typically it needs 4,500 tons a minute, 1 million gallons every minute, to end about 1,000 dirty, dirty. Dirty water, thousand tanks, dirty water, and they don't even call them tanks, they call them vats of various sizes, because quite a large percentage are very tiny. And so when you actually take the volume, first off, of all the tanks, it's nowhere near the numbers they're talking about, 343 million gallons. And when you take the actual 
reality that the buildings, there is no containment. The buildings are completely gone. The, it, the reactor cores and the fuel pools were either ejected from the site or burnt constantly and then detonated at the site. Uh, each day, 26,000 gallons are added to the total every day. The, the reactors that are burning down in Roman II in a chain reaction are at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And the numbers they're talking about is a garden hose, 26,000 gallons, uh, is 26 tons a day. So it works out to a garden hose is split six ways. Your typical garden hose is split six ways. So you take one of those six and split that four ways. And you see each one of them is pouring down or dribbling on one of the reactors. That's what 26,000 gallons a day actually is because a garden hose does 140 tons a day, 146,000 gallons a day. Dirty water, and he repeated that phrase in four different paragraphs. Yeah, these are meaning to suggest that is innocuous like this. The radioactive wastewater is first being run through a system of chemical filters. Well, like you're talking about fuel pellets, you're running water over melted fuel, what's known as a curium. The biggest byproduct of radiated curium fuel rods of the fuel rods is going to be a curium isotope. Tritium is like anything that touches becomes tritiated, and it touches significantly more water than that. Each reactor is capable of filling all the tanks up six times a day. Just let me show you one depiction so we make sure we get you on the right page. Because you might, I might never get your attention ever again. And if I don't give you the information, you can't protect yourself or your loved ones in the future. And I owe you that. I'm doing this every day for 12 years. I, I, this is the point of it, was to help you and your loved ones. Because it's a very difficult subject for the average person to work out. And unfortunately, I was stupid enough to take that road. Two sieverts an hour of better radiation. So it has to have gamma, it has to have alpha, it has to have neutrons, and it can't have two without ray, um, x-rays, because they create themselves, see? Everything you release, now two sieverts an hour per liter, if you fill up the tank, then you can never, tr tritium, you can't get a sievert of tritium, see? Tritium is not supposed to be in the conversation because the reactors actually look like the, and that's the cover story is to talk about tritium. The 13 nuclear, so they mentioned tritium, then claimed that the 13 nuclear plants in China released more tritium in 2021 than Diachi will release in one year. So they're claiming that a natural emissions from a normal reactor is worse than multiple reactor meltdowns and eight fuel pools are detonated. You get, you got any idea how dangerous slippery slope that is? How you can't have a future with this narrative. You've got to wake up and you've got to start having this conversation. Falling prices and harmful rumors. Harmful rumors. Well, you, you shouldn't be saying the reactors blew up. You got no proof of it. There's no science. Except for the analysts. Now, they took down my original site. Uh, with 1,600 of these presentations on them, and I was out looking for spiders with no strikes on my account. And this time, what they done was just remove my ability to live stream, which saves me hours and hours and hours of pre-work to get it on to the networks. So now I have to work three or four hours extra each day just so you can see the video on your end compared to the massive amount of hours I was doing before five days a week, year after year after year after year after year after year. Japan's environmental agency, when that's okay, if that's what it takes, that's what we're gonna be doing, unfortunately. Or I should say fortunately, because I feel fortunate every time a video gets out there, that at least I help somebody, hopefully. Japan's environmental agency, Fukushima Prefecture, announced last week the separate test showed no detectable levels of 
tritium, tritium. So, Dana, how much tritium comes from nuclear meltdown? Well, there's a lot. But you, what you got to worry about is the fuel reactor cores, the uranium, plutonium, and all the thousand other fission daughters that are created by that. Everything's created by uranium, ultimately. Plutonium is completely man-made. And it's named after the devil, not because of nuclear weapons, but because of its its ability to destroy your bone marrow and your chromosomes and your DNA and your stem cells, etc., etc., etc. And radiation inflicts up to 1,800 known diseases because of the way it compromises your body. And if you're young, then you have genital malformations where you have mutated stem... Um, you mutate the hormones from the thyroids. Now, it's not only iodine goes in the thyroid, it's any gamma. According to the International Atomic Energy Agency, and not all gamma goes in the thyroid, it ends up in sequesters in other areas, including the bones. A professor emeritus, or, uh, is a retired radiochemistry at the University of Helsinki, Co-authored a detailed study of TEPCO's purification system and found it worked efficiently. So he says his study shows there's nothing coming out of these reactors into the environment on tritium. Why is it every professor from a university is so hateful of all the eight million species in the human race? Why do they hate us so much, I wonder? Because that's their job is to, is to lead you to the edge of the cliff, and when you take a look, to push you over the edge and make sure you never survive. Tritium, tritium. He spoke first from the utility, told me that the uh, dirty water, nobody's ever mentioned the word dirty water. No spokesman for the utility told them dirty water. We've never seen that terminology in any of the, the tens of thousands of uh, headlines we've covered over the last decade or more. In 2019, for example, scientists reported results of a study that had begun eight years earlier to remove the monitor water near San Diego for 129. And this is quite interesting that they said something like this. I'll explain why. To monitor water near San Diego for one iodine-129 released by the Fukushima meltdown, but none was found. In spite of the expectations based on the ocean, the ocean, not the airborne, but the ocean currents, we'll contest that in a moment here, huh? on the ocean, but not airborne, when the scientists checked elsewhere on the west coast, they found the highest levels of 129 in the Columbia River, which is where Hanford is still. But Fukushima was not to blame. And look what her, they got Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution's little butt plug. It showed up everywhere in the last couple of days, folks. told him earlier this summer, as if he somehow, that the dirty water, dirty water, dirty water, dirty water, dirty water, dirty bastard. So first off, the, the studies were shown from Ottawa, Canada, sustained, not, you know, months and months of fallout and where they measured the iodine-129, which never, ever, ever goes away. It's 150 million years. And the iodine-129 in these quantities is something we've never even heard tell of. And we're talking per liter. So that's saturated the thyroid glands of everything. Every bird, every insect, every human, every child. Because it's a low emitter. It's not perceivable. You can't see it or smell it or hear it or taste it. 
But what it does in increments is it sterilizes all the little insects and birds, you know, animals that don't matter, right? And to the nuclear industry says they don't matter. I think it matters is the nuclear industry's children, next generation of inbreeds, apparently. But this is a catastrophic event that never goes away. So the study that what he mentioned there was really slick. He now he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't understand nuclear. There's other butt plugs out there understand the nuclear. They had 20 million particles of iodine 131 per liter in another study, another study of the xenon 133 uh, per square meter. There's another story from France of 10 million atoms per uh, square me cubic meter uh, covering Canada, United States of cesium 137. There's a uh, the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs, which is everything is a blasting hot particle. According to the degenerate, despicable, relentlessly hateful World Nuclear Association, meltdowns like the one that happened in Fukushima and Chernobyl are rare. And the uh, World Nuclear Association says that these are the only major accidents to have occurred. Hanford just a dumping is equal to a a wall of of radioactive sludge with everything you can dream of in it six feet wide 518 feet tall and wrapped around the entire plant and then some just from their dumping in the 40s and 50s so they can make weapons that they can't use in war and then Asby Brown. Now, I had done years ago videos on Asby Brown and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute abuse alert uh, from SafeCast on a number of occasions, right? They actually had me arrested and gave me gag orders so I couldn't mention their names. That lasted for three and a half years. And that's the people he's using as evidence. They're still going strong, cutting everybody's throat and took me to court and gave me gag orders to silence me. Unpopular decision to flush the water. Flush, this is not water. He writes about science, technology, and history from Tokyo, where he lived for 20 years. And he's the author of Loving the Machine, Loving the Military Industrial Complex. And there's the disgusting, revolting, parasitic scum himself, look. Huh? Anyway, on to the next one. Never stops with these mon These are actual monsters. There's no other way to describe these people. They're not even as people, they're creatures. 13 Chinese plants released more tritium. This is one of the studies that they were talking about. In 2021, then Fukushima's annual total loss. Remember those studies I just showed you a few moments ago? The plume models covers the whole planet and average is around 20 days. This one's 19.5. We've got endless studies. This is the is Norwegian Institute of Air Research, and this is the Xenon 130, no, this, yeah, the Xenon 133 radioactive fallout. 13 Chinese plants release more tritium. So why, why the hell are we talking about tritium? The only reason you would talk about tritium is so you can't have a future to make sure that you're not able to rationalize what the issue is. And in desperations, we work ourselves, myself, into the ground, into, into the ground every single day. We also carry out um, massive um, research expeditions that could take four to five months. And we've done six of them to Alaska on the ocean without coming home. These are perpetual field studies for up to, uh, I'm sorry, four to five months at a time. These, uh, this is only some of the media, as you can see their name there. Major media, CBS, BBC, CNN, ABC, Australia, pretending they're in a building that don't exist. For goodness sakes, please wake up. Please learn this stuff. Please get educated. And please get educated enough that you can articulate the issues, and then you win. But look what they got done to you already. 
So the annual amount of tritium in the treated diluted water to be released from the plant in Fukushima is capped at 22 trillion becquels. And they're probably releasing that every week from Fukushima into the environment because the buildings are actually destroyed. They're not like this. This is the official story, but that's the official picture. And you can't have both of them. You can't go down to a nuclear meltdown and everything is hunky-dory. The statement said the Chinese government firmly opposed and strongly condemns the discharge. Now, there's no way China doesn't know what the buildings look like. It's zero possibility. It's zilch. So China, Taiwan, South Korea are all in tandem with Japan and coordinated by the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is the, the straw man of UN, which is the military industrial complex. Taiwanese NGOs rally against the release of the Fukushima wastewater. Wastewater. And again, refusing to acknowledge the buildings are actually destroyed. A coalition of non-government organizations held a press conference, a press conference to talk about tritium instead of the buildings that are destroyed. In Taipei, Taiwan, on Wednesday, the voiced a strong opposition to the Japanese government's decision to release. Decision to release? Well, they haven't stopped releasing it now, have they? From the disabled, treated, disabled. The building doesn't even exist anymore. I think it's really unfair that the world is being snuffed out like this. All the species is being snuffed out, and I mean annihilated. In Taiwan, the cabinet said on the same day it would take one or two years for the water they were dumping instead of the water that they never stopped dumping. They refused to acknowledge the buildings looked like that. They refused to acknowledge that anything got out. And so, you, unfortunately, I have to jump back and forth to help articulate the insanity of what we're actually talking about. Tritium. Why are we talking about tritium when the buildings are lost their entire inventory is uranium, plutonium, and by proxy, a thousand different fission products. Radioactive substance tritium is projected to reach its maximum concentrations in four years. Yeah, Twelve years ago, it done it. Now, see, uh, let me get this for you. I just want to make sure there's no way you can misinterpret the significance of what is going on. When the buildings blew up, here's another model in the bottom. That's based on 27 days after the tsunami, 22 days after the last reactor had blown up. And look at this. The buildings were this size, and that's the reactor core and the fuel pools up there. In reactor 4, they have pictures of the explosion we've never, or, and videos, right, but have never released it. <coughs> if you got videos of reactor one exploding, you got videos of reactor three exploding, how come you haven't got videos of reactor four explosion when it's right alongside the boat of them? How can you not have video of that? Right? How can you not? And they're worse than all nuclear meltdowns combined worldwide in the same site. The radioactive substance tritium is projected to reach maximum concentrations in four years, the chief cabinet said. Adding expected level is lower than the standard concentrations of tritium in the water around Taiwan. Uh, could you get away with this massive dumping and pollution and emissions and everything else for 80 years? Well, for 70 years, and now 80 years later, the, everything is off the table. The truth will never exist again. If I don't tell it and show you the documentations, you're never going to find it anywhere else. That is fucking frightening, excuse the language. That is, because that means every university and academic and every discipline and every journalist and every media 
has turned her back on you permanently. Uh, so the Chief Cabinet Secretary, the General Secretary of Anti-Nuclear Organization, Green Citizens, argued that discharging the water into the sea is not the only option available. but it's cost effective. How can the person the, in charge of the big anti-nuclear organization not know the buildings are actually irreparably damaged and that the entire inventory has been lost to the environment, which is a catastrophic pulse event for all species? And according to the council, stepping up inspections plan to conduct 3,000 tests. How many, by the, like, they got to ignore the fact that this happened to say the words they're saying. If the radiation levels in the waters around Taiwan surpass safety standards, it could take days for the public to become aware of it, said the world's... How can you not know what the building looks like? Well, you can't be quoted in the media because the media's not going to show you these pictures. I'm showing you them to really drive it home. And that is two of the four reactors. There is four reactors. And originally, you can see, they were gone originally. Anybody with a nuclear, uh, any nuclear academic would have known they were gone immediately. Immediately. Not, not next week or the week after, but immediately, because they were paying attention. And this picture was available. Japan promotes food and sake in the EU. As if nothing happened. No, never happened. La -di -da -di -da. Nothing happened. Every everything is normal. And imagine how, sh how incredibly stupid you got to be. Now, the people that were there were diplomats, that's the people they invited from the embassies. Hoping the embassies will link them up, and that's what embassies does. Years ago, I was going to open a sea urchin plant on the East Coast. And so I had to go to the Canadian embassy in Osaka, Japan, which Osaka has the biggest fish market, around $17 billion a year in Japan, to get the buyer's list. So I contacted the Canadian Embassy in Osaka, Japan, and they, a week later, a big package, a massive package with all the connections you could ever dream of, showed up at my mailbox. And so when you're bringing diplomats, right, you're, you're bringing a litany of opportunities for these degenerates to poison. Japan is promoting food and sake from Fukushima, the nuclear wasteland itself. And 14 prefectures, not just the Fukushima prefecture, were banned by 55 countries worldwide for over a decade. After the block, the EU lifted import restrictions from the prefecture last month. Well, just on the remaining product, there wasn't a, a real restrictions. They said Japan had to provide their own test certificate, that it was below their artificially inflated after the meltdowns numbers, which now don't even, that never happened now. Now, now that just, that doesn't even exist. And it better exist or you're in real trouble. And guess what? You're in real trouble. In early August, the EU lifted import restrictions on food products from Fukushima and nine neighboring prefectures. Because it's not like a banana, it's not like a potato chip, it's not like walking in sunshine, it's not harmless and innocuous and benign. There was no restrictions though, they just wanted an artificial certificate saying it was checked and was safe not doing their own checking ever. And if you do, it's the nuclear universities in the EU who's doing it, and they're the first ones to cut your throat. And I mean that figuratively too, radioactively. Japanese ambassador to the EU, 
Yusuki told attendees, which are diplomats, that the Japan is ensuring food safety through a rigorous surveillance system that's based on scientific evidence, except for it's not. That's not, they don't have a picture there and then give you some, some sake or, or sushi or whatever the case may be. There is no scientific evidence that you can say is not going to be radiated from the nuclear wasteland when everything, the numbers are extraordinary. He said he's pleased that the people in the EU will now have more opportunities to taste radioactive food and radioactive beverages from the nuclear wasteland known as Fukushima and the nearby prefectures that were banned by 55 countries for over a decade. And those people were replaced and the bans were lifted. Every administration is an opportunity to murder you in your supermarkets. And they've seized upon it. And then Fukushima Governor Ichibori Masao, this, this creature is the first thing from the human species. The first three days he never even slept. He just told everybody there's no meltdowns. Every media organization made sure that they had a little video clip of them telling the world there was no nuclear meltdowns as the reactors were detonating. Now he's the governor of the nuclear wasteland the worst monster of all, and you put him in charge of the most vulnerable people and children and elderly. So Japan society is a scum society. Saying the EU lifting of the regulation will boost efforts to dispel unfounded rumors, unfounded rumors, which is a terminology we hear a lot, and reputational damage. The buildings are gone. The, the reactor cores are gone. Decades of fuel pools are gone. So Brussels is home to the representatives of 27 EU countries, a perfect place for the events. He said he hopes the Japanese food exports to the EU will grow. I'm going to play this little video clip of all of that, by the way. Oh, I didn't record the audio. Dana, my apologies, everybody. Taiwan clear, well, basically that's the story we just covered. And they happen to mention that the attendees are diplomats. And the diplomats, right from the embassies are, know all the markets, have all the names at their fingertips of each particular industry. Taiwan's clean and present spent nuclear fuel danger. This is super important. And this is a very rare story. Just let me set everything up for you. And by proxy then, this story will help you comprehend the fuel pool way better than normal because the reactors they're talking about in Taiwan are the same reactors. So the fuel pool doesn't look like the fake one Arnie Gunnarsson wants you to think it looks like. It actually completely destroyed. And shame on Arnie Gunnarsson and Megat Gunnarsson for doing what they're doing. Shame on them for being such monsters, such incredible, despicable monsters. The war in Ukraine has drawn concerns that those there is potential for a conflict to happen across the Taiwan Strait. There is a conflict with China based on Ukraine. So this is pure fear-mongering, by the way, because they're only 100 miles from China. China's not going to blow up fuel pools. So Taiwan's first nuclear power plant, the Chisholm 1 and 2, consisted of boiling water reactors, not similar to Fukushima Daiichi 1, but exact replicas which was involved in 2011 accident in Japan with spent fuel pools that are high up, uh, that spent fuel pools that are high up above the ground, high up above the ground. And let me just really articulate that here with this one. So the red depictions 
this one is the fuel pull. The other one is supposed to be where they do the fuel swap because you'll take out a one third uh, of the fuel out of the reactor core and put it in the other pool to cool down and they're both underwater and then they'll transfer it over later. But because you don't have a repository and they'll acknowledge that here in a minute because you don't have a pos repository anywhere. But you don't have a, po a repository anywhere. then everything is, not everything, but the majority of it is kept in the spent fuel pools that are at the top of the buildings, which are right up there and way over there. And this is actually at the top of the building too. So when Chisholm 1 and 2 went offline in 2018-19, more than 6,000 spent fuel assemblies were stored in the two elevated, elevated at the top of the building, and that's reactor 3 stump. That doesn't exist anymore. In the top of the building, so 6,000 spent fuel assemblies at 1,800 pounds each is 10, almost 11 million pounds. Basically 5,400 tons. So uh, officially they're saying reactor one, two, and three at Fukushima, which is the same buildings, only have 800 of these assemblies to be, that they're gonna in their fuel pools and reactor cores. That's the cover story. So you can see how it's sadistic here when a typical building, just in a, that's in a single fuel pool, by the way, had 10, over 10 million pounds. To free up space in the pools for newly discharged spent fuel, Thai Power in Taiwan, the utility company, moved 15-year-old spent fuel assemblies that were in the pool for 15 years from storage in the upper refueling pool. The refueling pool is on the other side. And uh, all reactors, 70 of them in the United States, all have that particular attribute, and so did Japan's, where the pools are actually stuffed way past their capacities because you don't have a repository, which are well above the ground level. Well, they're actually at the very top of the buildings that don't even exist, and that we're debating never anywhere except for here about the validity of the tritium narrative. Move those 15-year-old spent fuel assemblies for storage in the upper refueling pool and the upper refueling, the upper refueling pool. They actually show you this picture. And it's unusual to see the reactor from this side. That's, that's an actual unusual to see it. Now, right behind it, by the way, reactor four, which is not, you can see is destroyed, was the common spent fuel pool at the same level. And why is it pixelated out in the pictures that were released on the 10th anniversary? You see that roof up there? And the roof right here of these buildings? That's important too. Because I happen to have, I found one picture years ago in the media. It was very, very high quality. And I was able to zoom in on the picture. I'll set it up for you. So see the debris sticking up around here? That piece right there is over on that side of the building. So see all the debris over there? Even after they got the cap on, they still had all this debris on the outside of it. The cap was put there the same as reactor three and reactor four, was to hoodwink you into being complacent. And that's why people like this creature from ABC showed up. To reduce the vulnerability, Unifor's pool inventory in Fukushima to Tambu, with 1,535 spent fuel assemblies, half of that in Chisholm one pool. And the right is the graffiti cement pump whose boom was used to deliver water to the pool. Now the reactors needed a million pound a million gallons a minute. There's ten pounds in a pound and a gallon. It needs a million gallons a minute, four thousand five hundred tons a minute. And a cement truck can't pump water. To reduce the vulnerability and a cement truck, like the fuel pools are gone. 
And so basically what they're saying, through a hole in the roof, but the buildings are actually completely annihilated. These were 190 foot, 19 story, um, uh, 60 meter buildings, a little over 60 meter buildings. To reduce the vulnerability, Unifor Pools inventory of 1,500 spin fuel assemblies was moved in November and December to a common pool on the ground, and the common pool had melted in Japan, and we know that because they pixelated everything out. To reduce the vulnerabilities, Unifor Pools inventory of 1,500 assemblies backwards eh? If an attack caused an explosion similar to what happened in Fukushima Daiichi for damaging the roof, well the building is completely leveled. The building doesn't even exist. And what was left should have been razed to the ground, right? Uh, Helen Caldicott was another one they rolled out. She'd done hundreds of interviews where she claimed that it looked like that and didn't look like this. And the original video is up there. She was interviewed and asked, did the building really exist to the left or was it like the one to the, the right? The Japanese are very tidy people and they have by robot control and by human beings removed the debris from the top of building four and it does look pristine. There is no by robots. A by robot is a human. Anybody goes up there dies, and you can't do that. You can't go up and rebuild something that don't exist and say it's the original structure with the fuel intact because the fuel was long gone. Right? There's nothing left. That should have been razzed to the ground. They left it there to manipulate you and then claim that it looked perfect to your left in 2000, in the late fall of 2013, 2014. And we covered it back then, by the way. Spent fuel is accumulated. Remains in the refueling turned into storage pools adjacent to the reactor wells high above the ground. And the refueling turned into a storage pool. And all of these reactors done the same thing because we don't have a repository anywhere on the planet. All of them are very high above the ground. And the proper word would have been the top of the buildings. Um, top of the, the proper word would have been top of those buildings, right? And the buildings are no longer there. Support continued reactor operation at another one of the nuclear power plants to free up space in this lower level spent fuel pool. Spent fuel assemblies were moved into the upper refueling pool situated well above ground, well above ground. What a terrible industry, really, you know, what a terrible industry that the, the things they're doing. The fuel, fuel impulse are actually almost at the top of the building. There's space above it for the crane, but it's at the top of the buildings and there is no top to the buildings. Those buildings should have been razzed to the ground. They left them there so they can manipulate you by claiming, because you're not there, nobody's allowed to bring your cameras in there, that it looks magically like that. That's the official picture. Because one's, one's a typical storage pool, but the other one's considered the refueling pool. But after 40, 50 years of operations with nowhere to store it, those pools are actually over capacities, both of them. And so you're talking around 20 million pounds in each building. The official story, and there's four of these buildings lost. We're not counting the reactors, by the way. There's four of those buildings lost and the fuel pools. But the official story is only 2.2 grams of tritium. And they changed that story six weeks ago. And no media in Canada, no media in the United States or Europe has reported on it. Uh, and have a debate about it, or I would have had the uh, news cycle in the news cycle like you're seeing right now. Built after the accident into a ground level. So the Fukushima accident, subsequent actions by TEPCO to, re to move 
the spent fuel into a ground level common pool built after the accident. They built another fuel uh, ground storage common pool after the accident. Why didn't they keep using the same one that they had? It's been there for 40 years. Do you get it? And let me find a picture for you so you can comprehend it. Remember, that's, that's the original common spent fuel pool. Why is that all pixelated? Now, I've done a whole, the whole show last night was on these pictures that were released on the 10th anniversary in 2021. The whole, st all the, uh, reactor one, two, three, and four, common spent fuel pool in reactor six were all pixelated in the 730 pictures that were released. So now they're saying there's a common spent fuel pool in, now I've never heard this before, we're at this five days a week, <laughs> after week, you know, month after month, year after year, hardcore on top of that. I've never heard that before, that they have a new common spent fuel pool at Fukushima. That's the first time I heard that. TEPCO to move the spent fuel to a le ground level common pool built after the accident. Well, first off, the, the buildings don't exist anymore. You can't move fuel from a pool when the pool doesn't even exist and the buildings are flattened. And that the remains are then used to bludgeon common sense with false pictures. It's the same thing for reactor three. TEPCO to move the spent fuel and ground level pool built after the accident. That's quite the revelation. Removing the spent fuel from Taiwan would eliminate its clear and present spent fuel dangers that China's not, China knows where those pools are too. China's not going to accidentally hit them. They're only 100 miles away and in the prevailing winds. We'll take it right there right away. While fulfilling the goal of ensuing a nuclear-free Taiwan, well, I think they, like they moved, they built a nuclear waste dump on Orchard Island. And they told the natives it was a canning factory for tuna and salmon and crabs, and they built a nuclear waste site there. And by the time the natives figured it out, uh, almost a decade later, they were like, too late, it's already here, you signed the paper. And they're still fighting about it today. Government to provide updates following the release of Fukushima treated following, following, as is going to happen in the future, the releases, meaning the future, of Fukushima, and then using the word treated, when you can't treat the water. We counted the tanks, by the way, they only got 750 if you count all the small ones. If you fill the tank up, and I showed you some of that information earlier, a 2.2 sievers a liter or better, you can never build another tank on site because you can't get back on the site. You're talking about 1.4 million beckles or sieverts of just beta, and you can't have that without the gammas, the alphas, the neutrons, and by proxy, the x-rays. So you can't do it. And you can't step over the hoses ever. You can't, you can't walk alongside of them or, or 50 feet away from them that you're using to transfer because of the lethal doses everywhere. Like all the pipes that would go into the filtration facility would be so radioactive that you can never get near them. The filter becomes so radioactive immediately, you have to run away and never go back. And that's why the ELP system didn't work. That's why the Siri system just didn't work. And that's why in 2014, the so-called ELP system didn't work either. So where did you put the water for the first three and a half years? because you didn't build the tanks right away. You get what's going on? Because they do, they're, they're very good at covering up their laws. We understand, but the pictures are incontestable. The pictures are unassailable. The pictures tell the story, says clearly they're lying in everything they're saying. And it's important, it's not a game, it's not something you can ignore, it's not something you can pretend didn't happen and doesn't exist and doesn't affect you or your loved ones or your friends or your families or the eight million other species you're supposed to be the steward of. We will continue to monitor to ensure every piece of information we get will be shared with the people and we must avoid panic. 
we must avoid panic. There's nothing they won't do if you avoid panic, and that includes murdering you at your supermarkets forever. Additionally, Motsi, through the Department of Atomic Energy Agency, which is in Malaysia, Adam, Malaysia, will continue monitoring radiation levels as well as updates from the International Atomic Energy Agency, which uh, certified the batshit story that nothing got out. That it was certified that they're officially backed up the story is 2.2 grams of tritium in a thousand tanks. And Right, they're saying in the thousand tanks there's only 2.2 grams of tritium. Refusing to acknowledge the buildings had lost anything whatsoever, nothing. And that's the new version for the last six weeks. I'm calling it tritium wa and water. You can't have water from these things. You pour anything in there, it's no longer anything to do with water. You can't filter it or anything else. And the world is out there in full support of the false story. They got perpetual, non-stop support. They got billions of dollars to tell the story. Every media is getting a big chunk of the pie to proliferate that kind of lethal propaganda. Previous International Atomic Energy Agency Safety Review concluded the Japs' plan to release the treated water stored at Fukushima into the sea are consistent. Now, they've only been there five times. All of them was this year. One of them was for soil, where they have 30 million one-ton bags at Fukushima Prefecture, but nothing got out. Well, you've got to make up your mind. It can't be both. You didn't pick up 30 million... You picked up 30 million bags, rather. And so you can't call that tritium because you never did before. You never called the plumes that showed you tritium. The radioactive fallout models that showed you earlier are not tritium. There is no tritium model, by the way, of radioactive fallout. Fukushima contaminants, this was the Malaysian media, found as far north as Alaska's Bering Seas. Slate. Elevation levels of radioactive cesium-137 attributable to Fukushima uh, and the St. Lawrence Island in Fairbanks, Alaska. Northern edge of the plume, said Gary or Gay Sheffield, a Sea Grant Marine Advisory Agent based in the Bering Sea Town of Nome, Alaska. The leading edge of the plume, the plume, It's stunning, isn't it? The, the amount of lies, the perpetual lies that we see from all the world place academics, organizations, foundations. This is a plutonium 239 dispersal, and that's only based on venting. It's not actually based on the loss of the inventories of multiple reactors and fuel pools. And the numbers I got. Um, just from reactor four was 21,000 pounds of plutonium because it's key ingredients in the fuel pellets and you had decades of reactor cores there. And they're, they estimate the number at 2% if you downplay the numbers. Thursday, March 28, 2019 is when that story came out. But that was Malaysia cutting your throat and everybody there's throat. Japan seafood, uh, seafood exporters get emergency relief. They should get criminal records and end up in jail for poisoning humanity. Yeah, they got an extra $141 million emergency fund to help exporters hit by China's ban on deadly food from a nuclear wasteland. So you can murder somebody else worldwide. See? And really, right? Imagine how evil you are when your job is to make sure people get sick and die. By the way, you might hear some background noise. It's uh, 90 degrees here with the humidity, so I gotta have the air conditioner running. I've been sick all day. 
uh, not all morning, but all evening and night. And I passed out, and I said, well, I'll, I'll do the show. But I definitely didn't feel like it, but I'm so glad I did. Prices of scallops, sea cucumbers, and other seafood popular in China have plunged. The ban has affected prices and sales of seafood in places as far away as Fukushima in the northern islands of Quito, home to many scallop growers. And Hokkaido covered up a nuclear uh, earthquake right by its nuclear power plant in 2018. Let me see if I can find... I know I had accidentally have a picture right here. I probably won't find it. It's just as well. Anyway, I'm not finding it. They covered up an earthquake that was over nine in Hakito on land, and it cut power to four million people. That they needed uh, twenty thousand. Uh, rescuers, and the landslides dropped the payloads on all sides of mountain ranges, something I've never seen before. And so the $141 million Kushida just announced is additional, addition to the $547 million they just put, combat damage to reputation to stop people like you from finding me and learning the truth and being able to articulate the reality is a billion dollar industry each year. We will protect the Japanese fishing industry at all costs, but what about the victims that are going to get sick from eating it and die and their loved ones will have to liquidate their assets to try to give them some comfort for a few years? Asking people to help out by serving more seafood at dinner tables and other ways. The money will be used to find new markets for the deadly seafood to replace China and fund government purchases of the seafood for temporary freezing and storage so they can sell it later if you don't buy it. The government will also seek to expand domestic seafood consumption. And that's scary because in the first year, I find it hard sometimes to reconcile how insidiously, monstrously, hideously, re remorselessly evil that these, this criminal organization known as the nuclear industry in 2012, a year after, was an extra 865,000 cancers. 865,000 cancers. And not everybody got health care. Not everybody was diagnosed. Not everybody was understood. Not everybody, you know, there's 1,800 dis other diseases. There's heart problems and liver and lung and respiratory and pituitary and thyroid and adrenaline and Alzheimer's dementia and autism, diabetes and Down syndrome, schizophrenia. Physicists said he planned to cultivate new export destinations in Taiwan, the United States, Canada, Europe, the Middle East. Well, they, they already destroyed Canada. Canada removed all restrictions after 93 days. Everybody else kept the restrictions for a decade. They couldn't ship it anywhere, only to Canada, and they did. And such as Malaysia and Singapore. They talked with workers at a fish market to assess the impact of China's ban pledged to protect the Japanese genocidal fishing industry and caused three reactors to melt, which means nothing to the average person. It has no resonation whatsoever. It doesn't, it means absolutely nothing. Why don't they show pictures of the reactors? In any of the stories in the last six weeks, let alone the last six years, but particularly the last six weeks, there's nothing. China takes its anti-science disinformation campaign to a new level. So that story is saying that that never happened, that doesn't exist, and that that's not real. That's the only way that that story can exist. By being transparent about what's in the Fukushima water, Japan can counter China's 
anti-science, China's anti-science. Now, China is well aware of what it looks like and refuses to acknowledge it. China, South Korea, and Taiwan are working in tandem with Japan to hoodwink the entire population, particularly the Asian countries. And the rest of the world's media has been silent. Australia, in particular, and a Jim Smith from United Kingdom, Portsmouth University, and people like Tony Hooker and Tony Irwin and a few others from Adelaide's universities, these are academics, but just, they have the moniker of the professor, but they're just associate professors, that, which gives them legitimacy, right? Uh, but they're revolting with their lies. It's, their lies are 100% st criminal. There's, they should lose their degrees and be jailed for the rest of their natural lives minimum. It's 100% it's murder, what we're talking about, every direction. And I, I have to struggle every day to keep this story alive. China's media strategy is something truly to behold. They got a billion dollars over there to, to keep the, the propaganda machine well oiled. It says that the Chinese government is testing the world's tolerance for aggressive narratives and disinformation. If China wanted to do that, they just got to show you that picture, and that's the worst could thing could happen to the industry, because the cat is out of the bag when that comes out. Nobody's going to show you that. Moroccan Egyptians support Fukushima Treaty. No, they don't. It's a couple of politicians in key positions. It's not the country. They're not even having a debate about it. They have no concept. They have no, and that's that's the point now. The United Nations have made it so you can't have a debate. You can only have a debate on their platforms with their version, which is going to be the opposite of the reality. So the Japan foreign minister, right, goes over to uh, Morocco and Egypt. And then the media claims they got their support when the only support they got was a single politician. Come over with a suitcase of money. And they give you a, a clean bill of health for the food. They walk away and buy luxury resorts for the retirement. And you get sick and fucking die. Worldwide. This is the consensus of how it actually works. The International Atomic Energy Agency report concluded the discharge of the treated water was consistent with relevant international. This is literally a garbage can diagnosis whenever you hear it. It's the exact same narrative everywhere you go. And they even dragged in the old U.S. House of Representatives speaker, Kevin McCarty, called China's position on the release of the treated radioactive water from Fukushima nuclear power plant unfair and false during a visit to Tokyo. And look at all the, this is just less than a paragraph. Look at all the people that signed their name onto the story looking for and getting their street creds by invoking the US uh, House of Representatives speaker who refused now, like everybody else worldwide, is like this weird despicable death cult, isn't it? Because if you look at it as a death cult, then it makes perfect sense, everything you see, read, and hear. How nuclear energy could impact the water supply. So whoever wrote this story shouldn't be allowed to write ever again. Releasing contaminated water into the ocean or other bodies could have severe long-term impacts in drinking water. Could have. Really, you think that never happened? And we can't find a single person out there acknowledging that it actually happened, can we? I left an article, of course, why take the time when you know they're going to be scumbags? Fukushima meltdown, it won't just be the eels that are glowing in the dark anymore. Again, soon some fish in the area are going to perhaps be able to light up like an eel as well. I'm surprised he didn't call on Batman or the Hulk, or Superman, or Spider-Man to go fix it. There's a perpetual stream all day long, all day long of perpetual lies. And then Cindy Falker 
from Beyond Nuclear, Helen Caldicott's little pet mass genocide machine. Japan's dumping Fukushima radioactive water into the Pacific linked to long-term health hazards, long-term health hazards. Interview with Sidney Falker and radiation health hazard specialist with the group Beyond Nuclear, and they're talking about tritium. All Sidney Hawk Faulkner got to do is show that picture there. That's it. And the conversation becomes real. And they're a big organization beyond nuclear. And that's the last picture they're ever going to show. Three reactor core explosion released a high amount of radiation to the environment since Chernobyl was a single reactor. It was a brand new reactor. It was a graphite reactor, a totally different reactor. Fukushima reactors had and had decades of reactor core stored at the top of a Durgan too. Not only that, the, the Fukushima reactors are way more inventory. It's pure uranium, pure plutonium. It's the, we've never had four reactor buildings and eight fuel pools melt down at the one time, which makes it worse than all nuclear meltdowns combined worldwide, theoretically, at Fukushima. Just those two buildings dwarfs all nuclear meltdowns worldwide combined. There's actually two more, reactor one and two, and each of them have double fuel pools at the top of them that were stuffed with inventories from four decades, and they're gone. It wasn't 160,000 people forced to evacuate, it was half a million. And since the disaster, since, since, radioactive cooling water has been collected, site and stored in a thousand steel tanks. Again, these are, again, garbage can, uh, just regurgitated the narrative that they heard from the TEPCO itself. Went to TEPCO, read their page, and then came here and, and regurgitated a narrative with Beyond Nuclear. As of August the 24th, the Japanese government authorized the plant operator TEPCO as of August the 24th. It's the same day they stopped me from being able to live stream on YouTube and Rumble by a hack, by a hacker not by YouTube and Rumble, which is, but most likely is by YouTube and Rumble, but not officially. 350 million gallons of this contaminated water in the Pacific Ocean over the next 30 years. So since August the 4th, after streaming five days a week for a decade, I can't stream anymore. Not, and I got no strikes on my accounts on Google or YouTube or Rumble. There's no official acknowledgement. I contacted YouTube in the in the inside chat, there's a little chat icon. And out of over several billion people on YouTube, I'm the only person that was looking for someone to talk to and they got to me right away. They had to answer right away. Everything was good on their side. Have a nice day, Dana. Is there anything else we can help you with? Ha ha ha. So they're actually in my computer. I probably have my own chat room directly to them by the looks of it. How can you have over even a billion people and nobody in line with a question each time that I've used it? Do you get what's going on? They got no one else to pick on. They all got to justify their paychecks, so they all fuck me. Between the lines, Scott Harris spoke with Cindy Folkers. Radiation, she's a radiation and a health specialist with Beyond Nuclear. She's the radiation and health specialist, and she's talking tritium. So the water was used to cool the melting core reactor, which is highly, highly radioactive. And now she's asserting it's only tritium coming out. How, we, how can we have a future with people like that on our planet? And they're the only ones that the media will interview. Because it's not an interview. It's a reinforcement of the law. It's one propaganda machine using another for uh, litany. Tokyo's tricks, too predictable to fool anyone, China Daily says. Well, of course, China's fooling all of you, isn't it? Why is there different colored water gathered up in front of a nuclear meltdown? Because that's the runoff from the land itself, see? Fukushima water release won't deter China tourists, said a suit. 
The number of inbound visitors from China was 300,000 July compared with 30,000 January. January is cold winter, for God's sakes. Right? Most people in China are getting ready for the Chinese New Year at that point, right? Which is like January the 14th or something. Of course, they're not going to be traveling. July in, Ch in Japan is summer. So, of course, there's going to be a, a 10 times more. You dishonest little scum from ANA, the CEO, degenerate said. Taiwanese uh, NGOs rally against the release of Fukushima nuclear wastewater. Taiwanese NGOs. We, did, we covered that earlier. That's a different story, I guess. And so they're protesting tritium instead of the perpetual releases from multiple nuclear meltdowns. And I'm only showing you two of the four, and that's eight fuel pools we're talking about. Gone. Each fuel pool, as I showed you earlier, could have up to 10 million pounds in it. Officially, only 2.2 grams got into buildings that don't even exist anymore. That's a pretty neat trick. And don't worry, it never got out. It's in the 1,000 tanks, 2.2 grams of tritium. They built a thousand tanks for 2.2 grams of tritium. It's, I, like I, I pray and I hope that the ones that watch this understand the enormity of the evil that we're talking about, the incredible, vicious, hateful evil we're actually talking about to regurgitate these narratives for these people to say stuff like they're saying. And it's from every direction. It's every media, every university, every academic, and every professor, and every government agency worldwide has done the same thing for six weeks. Every one of them. Not a single descending voice. And I was silenced from the live streams. It doesn't mean I'm not going to produce it and still get it out there, but i got to work an extra three or four hours each day now. I've been at this for over a decade. Now i got to work an extra three or four hours to get the same quality and videos up. So I'm, it's a... It's a big learning curve for me to get out at my regular time each night. And I apologize uh, because it's, it's so much work. I can't seem to get it on schedule. And today I happen to be unbelievably sick all day. Even though I worked all morning, I got up early and I never stopped working all morning. And, and what you're reading now is what I... What we gathered up this morning. A coalition of non-government organizations in Taiwan held a press conference about tritium instead of the actual nuclear meltdowns. Decision to release the, to release. So they're saying it on, started on the 24th of August, except it started on March the 15th and never stopped, 2011. And by the way, the building over there, Reactor 3, was the mixed oxide fuel facility. So Reactor 4 had around 21,000 pounds of plutonium that's gone. This would have had about three times as much because it's mixed oxide fuel. And the emissions from a nuclear reactor, normal emissions from the fuel pools all day long, and they're surrounded by farms. We covered that last night show. Almost all nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms because they're hemorrhaging radiation from the fuel pools, which have decades of reactor cores and are all splitting the atoms perpetually, 24 hours a day, into the environment with no containment. This planet, you better wake up. You're running out of time. You are now on a, on a clock. You need to wake up. A coalition of non-governmental organizations, which is government sanctioned organizations. Started on the 24th, did it? Tritium is lower than the standard concentrations of the waters around Taiwan. In other words, get sick and die, we don't care. We'll kill everybody because we're getting a cut of the pie and therefore we're immune to everything. We're, we're stupid, is what they're telling you. As such, the impact of radiation related to safety near Taiwan is considered to be negligible. And speaking in front of the Japan Taiwan Exchange Association represents Japanese interest in the absent formal diplomatic ties. The General Secretary of the Internet Anti Nuclear Organization Green Citizen described Japan's decision as a merely cost effective solution when they should be showing you what the buildings look like. 
and saying, listen, they're lying to you. And that's the end of the conversation. Now everybody knows what to protest, right? So silence me, because they don't have anybody else out there that's providing the documentation. It was a pretty simple job. They got no one to pick on. I'm surprised they left me up. I can't believe they did, really. Studying a TEPCO report that confirmed between May 2022 and May 2023, a total of 44 fish found in the port near Fukushima, right in front of the wharf itself, in what they call a compound, where they said they had nets there to keep the fish from getting out. So these are fish that got out they're talking about. And he said because they had the nets there, they didn't check it for the last six years. And they didn't check anything because it's all long gone. But it's shocking when you unravel the actual propaganda. And D Dirk, this is like, when you're talking about 44 fish, you're looking for loose ends. That's the only reason you're mentioning that is, okay, well, we covered that, that story. Now that's covered. Everybody has to repeat that exact story from now on. In addition, although Taiwan's government has launched an ocean radioactive information system, Taiwan, to provide since Fukushima, since August 24th, right, or this year, to provide information regarding radioactive levels in the water around Taiwan. I'm going to do 3,000 samples around, right? We covered in the earlier story on the same subject. If radiation levels in the waters around Taiwan surpass the safety standards, it could take a couple of days for the public to become aware of it. According to Council, stepping up inspections and plans to conduct 3,000 tests on marine products from nearby waters this year. Refusing, in other words, they're refusing to acknowledge anything happened, so therefore the outcome is predetermined. There will be nothing found. Because you can't have boats, see? But that's the saddest day in humanity is the day they came up with this story, and that became the official story. Because they're not pretending the buildings didn't melt down because it's harmless. It's catastrophic. And just because you can't perceive it, or smell it, or see it, or hear it, or feel it, or taste it, doesn't mean you better, that you shouldn't worry about it. It's you better worry about it. You better start paying attention. You gotta avoid everything from Japan, everything from China, everything from Taiwan, everything in particular from South Korea, because they are about to poison you through the distribution in your supermarkets worldwide. You're gonna ship it there and then ship it onto you by relabeling it. You've been doing it for 12 years already. Now they're gonna accelerate it. Because everybody's doing it, China's doing it, South Korea's doing it, the US and France and the UK. Jim Smith, a professor of environmental science says, and he's talking about tritium. And we've covered him many, many times in the last six weeks, the same entity, the same university. So he's doing it, we should sue the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom for doing what they're doing. It's not Jim Smith, it's the University of Portsmouth in the UK. And they're specializing in radioactivity uh, cover-ups, not radioactivity, it's actually so. And look who else they got there, Woods Hole. A person who actually took me to court and got me gag orders for three and a half years is their other authority. And I, and I can't be silent. I can't sit in silence while I'm looking at this. And I might get gag orders for another three and a half years, but I can't be silent. I'm not capable of being silent about this. I got enough problems sleeping. I won't be able to sleep at all if, it be, if I don't speak out. And by the way, I still haven't got the truck back. So pretty, pretty horrible. I can't get out and do any research. The list is so long, it's frightening. But they got billions of dollars thrown at them to stab you in the back. Where's the, how come I can't get a single foundation to help me raise the, the, have a debate? Why does the world hate me so much is the question I ask myself every day. So initially after the accident, water needed to be cooled. Initially at nuclear meltdowns. That works if you don't acknowledge what the buildings actually look like, see? 
water. It's not water. This is lethal by the liter. It's no longer water. It needed to be cooled. Water didn't need to be cooled. So the cooling water going through the reactors, it doesn't go through the reactors, was initially put in the Pacific Ocean directly. So they're, they're paying attention, aren't they? They need to cover up what happened. This is what they're doing. But since 2012, it's treated and stored and been going on because the reactors were slightly warm. They, these are 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures we're talking about. They're not slightly warm. Horrible scum. Monstrous, unbelievable scumbags. And still need cooling. No. If you don't pour water perpetually, they'll have a criticality and go into a chain reaction again and consume everything around and atomize and aerosol and ionize and radiate and release it as perpetual radioactive plumes, which is what's still happening anyway. Since about 2012, the Japs, now they didn't start building the reactors until 2000, or the tanks until 2013. As we're storing all the tree, all the tree to water, all of the tree to water. The water couldn't be treated. The water wasn't treated in 2014, for goodness sakes. Let me show you that because that disproves everything you said and will say. I apologize for working hard every day and trying to do the moral and ethical thing. I apologize for constantly begging the world to support me. I apologize for working like a dog to try to help you and your loved ones have some kind of a future. Because obviously, here we go. Let me show you this information so you can see with your own two eyes. 2014, three years, one month later, the ELP system didn't work. August 12, 2014, three years, six months later, the Riva system, same as the ELPS, hadn't worked. 2013, the Siri system was supposed to separate, which is S A R R Y. And the Korean is the same thing, by the way, which is supposed to separate cesium-137, didn't work. And they acknowledged also that there was enormous amount of highly contaminated water going directly into the ocean from massive amounts of leaks, not from the reactor buildings, because they don't exist anymore. And that the ambassador said this could one day be considered the start of the ultimate catastrophe of the world and the planet. And that from a thousand years, it can still be hemorrhaging into the ocean and it's over a receiver per liter. So when Jim Smith, or the Portsmouth University current puppet, tells you these lies, if you're wealthy, you should help me. I'll sue them for you. The reactors stay warm because of what we call fission products. So the thing that uranium breaks up in the reactor is still operating and still remain warm. So using the word warm is uh, so dishonest and disingenuous. The reactors, the, the fuel is still splitting atoms. And when you pour water over the, rea the reactor core, which you can't get near, by the way, you're fine because Obviously, reactor three and reactor four don't got reactor cores or fuel pools to do that to. They're, they were ejected from the buildings, either through constant burning or like reactor three through detonations. I'll show you a picture of reactor three detonation. I can show you the video because we actually have a video. We have a video of reactor one and we have a video of reactor three, but why don't we have a video of reactor four when they're right alongside of each other? I guarantee you they didn't stop rolling. They didn't stop recording. They had lots of cameras. How come we don't have a video of reactor four? And then talking about tritium water, which they're calling tritiated, he said it's about three grams of tritium. Three grams. 
uh, the a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering in South Korea, one of the most prestigious universities there, said it was equal to three grams of sugar being thrown into the ocean. So, like, it makes sense that uh, all nuclear professors and nuclear engineers, nuclear scientists, should be locked away forever, or preferably much worse. He said three grams of, but he says, yeah, three grams. Get sick and fucking die. Three grams, yeah? The tritium meaning of tritiated hydrogen? Yes, okay, exactly, okay. Uh, Vietnam exports see marginal impacts from China's Japan's uh, seafood ban. Japan tests Fukushima fish daily to quell safety concerns. Again, I'm doing a quick and dirty. I'll show you the same pictures in hopes of reinforcing it so you accept the truth because the minute you go away from me and read the mainstream media, you can be lulled into complacency and, that's, and we need you to fight for the species. We need you to make a stand or at least support me. Preferably make a stand, I'll support you. Reach out to me, I'll provide you with all the documentation. I do it anyway every night. We usually do five of these shows a week. We're trying to get back on track since we've been banned from streaming through hackers, apparently, allegedly, officially, but not through the social media. So they didn't block me. And they're not worried that someone can. Japan's Kishida, which is the prime minister, puppet of current puppet, they go through a lot of them every 18 months or so. There's another useful idiot says China's seafood ban contrasts with wide support for Fukushima water release. So claiming there's wide support, wide support. This, and so like a lot of the narratives you're hearing tonight, I would classify as um, desperation. They're tired of people resisting them and now they're doing anything, they're saying anything they think. It's desperation, it's not coordinated. They're using the same narratives, but it's not. It's no longer. It's no longer symmetrical like it was the first week. Now the buildup has been going on for about six months straight, and then the buildup, the big buildup for the last six weeks. Well, actually, since July the thirteenth was the official start, and that came out of South Korea. But the official story was two point two grams of tritium. Kishida, which is Japan's current puppet in command, approached Chinese premier, which is a commander, because they're one party, during a break and explained to him Japan's efforts in the treated water discharge. Well, is there a possibility that the prime minister, uh, president of Japan, uh, China, doesn't know that happened and doesn't know that's what it looks like? There's zero possibility. So to, for them, the media to come out and make these types of assertions, Stressing the importance of scientific approach and the release of accurate information. No, just regurgitate whatever they're telling you. Don't don't show that. That's accurate information. You don't want you don't show that. That's not allowed into the lexicon. And then they invoke House Speaker Kevin McCarty again uh, with Rahm Emanuel. Somehow, if they eat seed food allegedly from a nuclear meltdown, that mitigates the facts, does it? And then they're going to call it science. Trust the science. Trust the science. UN, the UN must speak up loud and clear for the right to water. The UN, why, oh why, are you putting a foreign entity in charge of everybody's future? Are you too stupid? to have a conversation yourselves. When you see that kind of narrative, UN is the military industrial complex. They're the very last people on the entire planet anybody should be trusted. When you take these extremely vulnerable people who don't know nothing on a UN, you are in the worst case scenario. Besides a finger in the eye, I just done it myself. Man works to draw attention to his late father's heroic actions 
during Three Mile Island nuclear meltdown. The media says the nation's worst nuclear disaster. There's multiple worst disasters in the United States. And Three Mile Island was bad. And the official story was everybody got about a, mil a microsiever or a millisiever dose. But don't worry, it was like watching colored television for an extra year was the official narrative that came out. We, we, you can find entire presentations just on Three Mile Island on my site. But Santa Susana was equal to uh, 460 Three Mile Islands meltdowns at the same time. Hanford, in just one dose dumping, had dumped approximately 450 billion gallons. It's enough. They currently have 177 tanks with 56 million gallons in it. That's enough dumped in the 40s and 50s to fill up 1.4 million of those tanks, like Fukushima, for instance, was dumped directly into the soil, not a water, and Fukushima's got nothing in them, they're empty, they were built to manipulate you, but of actual sludge, which is equal to an aquarium six miles wide, 518 feet tall, wrapped around the entire planet more than once. And if you took uh, a gallon of that sludge to a, a train station or a subway station or an airport, every human that walked past it for a million years will die that day with a simple gallon. And they dumped 450 billion gallons of it, and it's splitting the atoms, this stuff we're talking about, by the way, into the environment, in, into the water right alongside the Columbian River. into the water alongside the Columbian River. Um, we need to put low dose radiation, now that, that story was uh, beyond a paywall. Confusion on the possible effects of Fukushima water releases fuels irrational fears, irrational fears. Many people aren't aware of their constant exposure to radiation from terrestrial and, com and, cosm and cosmic sources and food and water and natural radioactivities within their bodies have nothing to do with anthropogenic man-made radiation. And who wrote it? Tony Hooker. Now normally he goes by the name of Tony Hooker Right? Normally, he goes by the name of Tony Hooker. And he, Anthony, now he wrote another story, which is uh, this story here. And when you check it, who else is in that story? Is the, the Woods Hole Oceanographic little degenerate piece of shit Busler, perpetual lawyer? And Tony Hooker, the University of Adelaide, we've covered him extensively. And he's another one who's regurgitating, regurgitating a narrative of, of, trit, of tritium, 2.2 grams of tritium. China must stop its citizens' irrational harassment of the Japanese. Well, just imagine if the truth came out the world would harass everybody in Japan, everybody, uh, not Japan, but everybody in the nuclear industry worldwide would get what they deserve right away. And that day is coming, because I'm going to make sure of it. Uh, we'll end the show right there, because that's the end of the show, obviously. But you think those people are in the building to the left 100 feet above the stump, and that stump to your left should have been razzed all the way to the ground, see? All right, so that's it for tonight. God bless you, everybody. Have a great night, great day tomorrow. I apologize, all the shows were late this week, and this one will be too. Nothing I can do about it. I'm trying the best I can. 
We've got to raise money to fund this operation. I'm encouraging everybody to donate. The links are below in the description. There's directly to the only two ways to donate to me. And at my website, it'll take literally any card, including bank cards, worldwide. It's hooked up to a great big banking system. I'll never know nothing about it. I just get a message that so-and-so donated. And so I have no... This is all done legitimately. The site's been there for 10 years. We've never had an issue with donations. And the world needs to make a real stand. You gotta make a stand. And if you're not gonna do it on your own, try to support me. I'm actually the good guy. I'm here to fight for you and your loved ones. You have a great night, great day tomorrow. We'll see you on Sunday. And we'll try to be at the regular time. I'm throwing a big curveball and it's pretty hard for me to pull it off. I'll, I'll keep trying. Have a great day. Take care, everybody.